Hi, it's Tim on Digital Woodworking. Today, going to really have some fun with a CNC. I'm usually doing practical stuff, but today I'm going to have some fun. So I was digging around at thingiverse.com. Now Thingiverse is a fantastic website that's a repository for 3D models, typically to be 3D printed, of course. I ran across this guy named 3000 Alttech, and he produced a modern version of an Aztec calendar. In this case, the calendar is a whole collection of all the great Star Wars characters and the ships and all kinds of things. He created a really terrific drawing. You can see it over here on the screen. So uh, what I did was, is I downloaded his model and what I did is I laser cut using a Dremel LC40 laser printer to make these really terrific coasters. I've given a couple of those away. And uh, I thought it wouldn't be great to make a large one. And I had just the excuse. I live in a very small community and we're lucky to have a fantastic locally owned theater. And I thought it'd be great to make a large Aztec calendar for, for the theater's lobby. And so I figured out a way to make it two feet in diameter. And what I did was, is I V carved this. Now, I'm not going to get into too many specifics about this V-carving operation. They're actually pretty simple. Basically, all you do is you set your depth and you put in the bit that you're going to use. In my case, I used a 60 degree angle V-carve bit, which is fairly steep instead of a 45, of course. So uh, I also have completed one other calendar with the Marvel Universe already. Let me show you that. So now you can see what these look like when they're completed. This was done by San Diego CNC, another uh, person up there on thingiverse.com. And what I'm going to do is show you how I do the finishing work on this as well. And the specifics of this, I just used three quarter inch MDF and uh, I pre-sanded the surface because there's not much opportunity to go in there and smooth the surface and little scratches are going to show up in a paint job. So I actually sanded this entire sheet of MDF really fine, really, really fine. And then what I did uh, as I complete them, I go in with a brush and I clean up the little edges and stuff. I'm going to be spray painting them and you'll see how we uh, work on that over the next couple of days. Well, I'm outside my shop and I'm going to get started. So as I mentioned inside, I'm going to start with a primer and I'm going to use a Rust-Oleum kind of that dark, rusty, red kind of primer. A couple of reasons for this. One of them is, is I'm going to try to get into all the deep crevices that have been V-carved in here. And then I'm going to follow that up with a flat black coat on top. But I won't cover everything. There'll still be a little red showing at the bottom of the V-grooves. So let's get started. The base paint layer on the Aztec style calendar is now complete. So what I did is I used a rust colored uh, primer, made sure I got into all the carved out areas with the primer, let that dry. Then I used a matte black finish over the top. Now when I put the matte black on, I didn't want to get too thick because there's some very fine details in these plaques. And what I did is I sprayed, but I didn't get 100% down into the grooves. I left some of the red kind of showing through. And the reason for that is I want a little bit of a three-dimensional quality to it. Something a little bit different than just being pure matte black. So anyway, that worked out really good. So at this point, I'm ready to put on the final finish. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a product that I found and it's called Rub and Buff. And uh, what it is, it's a metallic wax finish. And it's a pretty amazing product. There's a ton of videos on YouTube about it. But what attracted me was some of the cosplay people were just doing amazing things with it. So for the Star Wars plaque, I'm going to put down a silver leaf finish over the top. And for the uh, Marvel version of this, I'm going to put down an antique gold finish. But it turns out there's going to be yet another project. Uh, the gentleman who came up with a Marvel uh, calendar He's also working on a, a DC Comics calendar, so I'll probably end up doing all three. And I'll do both of those in the gold. So uh, this stuff is so uh, efficient. It's just amazing. It just takes the tiniest bit. So I um, earlier, I had done some uh, testing with it. I started off with a carved out area here and gave me a chance to play with it and come up with some different techniques that I'll use for this project. 
But essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down a slightly thin version of the finish on the top surfaces only of this, of this, uh, of this plaque. And to apply it, I'm going to actually use kind of a rough ribbed t-shirt material. And, uh, uh, and I'm going to put on the very thin coat and then I'm going to actually use a slightly more pure coat to highlight it. And to thin it out, I'm going to use, uh, well, this is an old trick, is I'm going to use the bottom of a Coke can. And I'm going to put a tiny bit of this finish in the Coke can and just a couple of drops of mineral spirits. And then I'm going to mix that up and then I'm going to rub that into the top surface. Again, making sure that I don't get down into the grooves. I just want the top surface to be covered with this. And I found from my previous experience, um, I made one of these before I did a test one. I gave it to my brother-in-law. It took about an hour to actually get everything all covered just right. And I suspect it'll take just about that much time this time as well. So I'm ready to get started and here we go. Okay, well, to get started, as I mentioned, this is the product I'm using. It's called Rub and Buff. And how it works is when you rub something on, it dries actually very quickly. And if you keep buffing it with some sort of soft cloth, it actually shines up. So you can control the shine. The more you rub, the shinier it gets. Pretty amazing stuff. And um, the test that I had done on this, on an earlier one, I found that it took about half the length length of a tooth, uh, standard toothpaste squeeze to actually cover the whole product. It's just amazingly efficient. You may find one to would do everything you need. So in this case, I'm going to put a little bit here, put a little bit out, start with very little. As you can see, there's hardly anything that I put out there. Gives me a good start. And then uh, I put some uh, mineral spirits put uh, oh, a couple three drops three drops of that and then I have a standard popsicle or craft stick and I'm just going to thin it out a little bit and that way I'm going to put it on very thin and then uh, I have uh, um, a cloth that I'm going to apply it with. Now I tried a lot of experiments. You can get some amazing stuff out of dry brush techniques and such, but for this everything has to happen on the top surface and the surface uh, needs to be relatively um, relatively uh, flat when you do it. So I just kind of watered around my finger and uh, distribute it. That's where this little can comes in. And of course we'll start with Darth, Darth Vader here. And I'm actually rubbing pretty hard because I'm trying to put it on thin, but even. Again, trying not to get into the grooves, trying to have it drip over the edge. Just trying to be very even about it. Again, I want to be coming back to put, to bring up some highlights with a little thicker iteration of it. As you can see, if you're not careful, it kind of builds up in some areas. So, trying to make sure everything's even. And again, from my previous experience, I found that you need to go back in and kind of even things out, which I will. So you can kind of see that area is kind of coming together. And uh, if you look below here along the edges here, you can see a little bit of a reddish showing in here. Well, that's the primer. And again, I was deliberate about that. I actually let some of that show through. It'll help build up a, a little sense of depth. Well, I'm going to get back to work on this and show you what it looks like when I'm almost done. Well, the finishing is complete. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I did the Star Wars shield in silver. Here it is here. And the Marvel version, this is a really an Aztec calendar style, and uh, in gold. And uh, as mentioned earlier in my process, what I did is I thinned out the material so it allowed me to get a little bit of graduation of color. And also, as I mentioned earlier, 
I put down a base coat I spray painted, uh, a base coat of a rust colored primer, and then on top of that, flat black, but I didn't get 100% down in the grooves. It does actually kind of bring up a little bit of depth. There are links below that'll take you to the drawings for each of these different Aztec style calendars. They both go to thingiverse.com. Now note that most of the files on thingiverse.com are what are referred to as STL files. These are three-dimensional surface kind of files. This works for 3D printing. But if you're going to CNC these out, you should use the DXF files or better yet, if they're available, a PDF file. Now both these files had been processed or both these different designs had been processed through SketchUp, which produces some pretty sketchy files for CNC milling. As a result, there's like a billion different, uh, different steps along the way. So it takes quite a while to do the calculations. And in fact, each of these took about 45 minutes on my computer to calculate the tool pass because of that. Follow the links below that will take you to the individual files. And also I've got a link that will take you to a YouTube video about this material here that I brought up. And that's this rub and buff, which is a remarkable material. I got slightly different results uh, with the gold and the silver, by the way. The gold, I was able to dilute a little bit better and get a little more shading. So uh, for Tim at Digital Woodworking, have a terrific day. Thank you.